Well, this is what's so exciting because, um, yes, it's exciting to restore classic cars and everyone loves them. Um, there's a real environmental component here because uh, we do, most people recognize, yes, we're transforming to electric. Uh, we, uh, but the emphasis is always on new, 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 new. We have hundreds of thousands of cars that are out there right now that can last years and years. EV conversions is a way of keeping and maintaining those rather than scrapping them. Um, I think that translates into your sort of second stream of business, which is the buses and the fleets. So do you want to comment about that? Sure. What's, how can we get that off the ground? You know, I've had a number of government officials very interested in what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And everybody wants to be kept in the loop. Right. But nobody's standing up and saying, you know what, why? Why are we spending, and we can, why are we spending $400,000 on a brand new school bus when RISE has come to an, uh, uh, an ability to convert an existing bus for 200000 Right. Now, there, there are four main bus companies. It's political. It gets me in hot water when I talk about it because I challenge people to the status quo. You, you can't make a change without just ruffling feathers. But we have Lion Electric. You know, the bus right now costs six hundred thousand dollars to make and the government is offsetting that bus by two hundred so that the open market on this bus is about four hundred thousand dollars for the school board so the school board can buy a diesel or gas bus for one hundred and thirty five thousand dollars now their electric bus is going to cost them four hundred thousand if they converted it they'd only spend two hundred thousand mm -hmm. now there's opex and capex the, the capex to buy the bus is paid for by or supported by the federal government, and then the provincial government helps out with the operational costs. Mm -hmm. And it costs about uh, thirty-five thousand dollars a year to run a school bus, um, just in gas alone. So if we had a if we had a commitment, yep. um, government's a dean, uh, great idea. Uh, let's move forward with it. How far away are we actually from being operational into converting bus fleets? Well, we. We it's now getting further. The reason why is because yeah. I put so much time and energy into it. And there's a couple problems that's happening. We're seeing a massive shift to social media and culture and influencers where today four of those people should have become heavy-duty mechanics. It's hard to find heavy-duty mechanics. So there's a whole subculture that's happening. This is a huge problem in the labor attraction yeah, they, and getting people in the skilled yeah. trades. That's going to be my next point yeah. is you're just one person. You need a whole hundreds of you we do but you know I've worked with so with the buses in particular and we will pull off the cars for a bit happy to come back to it because as rise is a company that you our format is very straightforward We're laser focused on driving the price down and quick turnarounds mm -hmm. so it's commercialized and I'm very proud of that goal and ambition with my team yeah. um, with the buses we've we've shelved it for a while because I have worked with the government now one of the things I didn't mention is if you're the Langley school district and you want to buy a brand new bus and it's electric, the government will give you a $120,000 grant to buy the $400,000 bus. Right. Okay, so if you take 120 out of 400, you're left with 280. Yeah. Okay, and from there, the operational cost is going to be about $50,000 a year less between gas and operational. Mm -hmm. So within three to four years, the bus is paid for itself. Now, in tourism and travel, if you buy a brand new bus and do the exact same, the, go the government, I believe, is at presently is only giving a $50,000 grant. Mm -hmm. Now, tourism and travel runs 24-7. School buses run a couple hours a day. But there's a whole ecosystem around the school bus or tourism and travel or buses in general. And in the province of British Columbia, we have two manuals, one that's five and a half inches thick and one that's five and a half inches thick. One is for the yellow school buses, AM, PM pickup, that we all see, mm -hmm. and this is for all other buses. And the government has these. This one is called the D250. Mm -hmm. And this one is controlled and regulated by an organization in BC that does all the procurement of buying buses for the industry mm -hmm. or the school boards. The challenge is, is that the four main bus manufacturers don't want me doing what I'm doing. So they'll fight tooth and nail. They'll put things in there like if you change the fuel source of the bus, it can no longer be an AMPM school bus. So it protect, protects them. And the school bus industry, the yellow school bus industry, has a 12-year cyclical flow. So if you and I and two other friends owned all the school buses, um, we know every 12 years we're going to have a cyclical flow of turnaround. And the electric uh, electrification of 
all the school buses, not convert converting ICE buses mm -hmm. to electric, is going to cost taxpayers thirty-four billion dollars over the next twelve years. So what I went to the government with, and I worked with um, Ed Shriver out of Manitoba. He used to be the um, uh, bear with me. He runs the Northern Heritage Fund, and he he. Uh, he and then Al McDonald, the mayor of North Bay, called and he wanted to convert his bus fleet in North Bay. We had to go to government because this D-250 has all these rulings that won't allow anybody to certify it. But they'll certify brand new. Right. But they won't take the time to go, okay, for $200,000 we can convert. And what I tried to say, I, I spent an hour with Anthony Rhoda, the Speaker of the House, because most mm -hmm. things get funneled to him. Mm -hmm. And I, I kind of went down the path with Anthony around it, and I was very adamant we got to a point where if we, if you gave me 20% of the yellow school buses, so right now we have about 86,000 yellow school buses in Canada. If they gave 20,000 of those, any of them between one and five years of age, so they're still new, and we converted them for 200, you'd save 200. The school Amazing. district would save 200. Yeah. So I, Ken, I'd like to say you order one bus, and instead of buying it for 400, you're the principal of a school. I would love to deliver you a, your, your current bus, electrified and hand you a check back for 200 because yeah. you were going to have to buy it for four. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, the scalability, the metrics, you know, could change a little bit, but it'd be more rounding numbers. Absolutely. But I want the government. So they did call, um, and we were trying to work on a test pilot, and they said, Dean, we're, we're really strung by this D250, and we can't get around it. And I'm not sure. I think they can. They're just not willing to right now. Mm -hmm. The only problem is we only have a 10-year window, 12-year window. That's right. You know, the bus companies are going to cyclically flow through it. And mm -hmm. within 12 years, all school buses will most likely, touch would be electric, if not yep. sooner. Yep. And that adds, and there's a massive amount of carbon offset. Yep. And then rise as, you know, as we visualize where we want to go, just I'll, I'll give you this example. We want every school bus, and we did this with BC Hydro. We had them come to the office and went through. Every school bus, we want to have an eight-hour charge on the bus. Now, they only are going to operate in the morning for an hour, an hour and a half, and in the evening, an hour, an hour and a half, pick up and drop off because it's the AM, PM. It's right. not the auxiliary buses, the white ones that drive to the football games or go to Science World and back. These are the yellow school buses. Yeah. Right. Now, if that bus had an eight-hour charge, I live in North Van, and three times a year, I have power outages, and our school is closed. And what that causes is about a half a million to a million dollars on our economy of moms and dads having to stay home, not go to work, take their kids out of school, mm -hmm. you know, you paid for daycare, you can't use it. There's this whole ecosystem that happens. Now, working with BC Hydro, they're clamoring to find different ways for energy. And these buses, three buses from West Van, where the school didn't go down, could come over to North Van for the one or two schools and back to grid, could plug in and run the school for the time of day and we wouldn't be out. 